I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about, about gentle skin care. If you are a patient at Jefferson, you know how important we think gentle skin care is, and um, I'm usually the one that's annoying all of our patients. And I'm, if some of them came today, they'd probably run the other way because I'd be like, let me check your skin. Um, so I'm going to just give you some guidelines, and we'll go over a couple of things. So hopefully you can take home some really useful points and understand a little bit why we're asking you to do the things we do at home. So our objectives of today, we're going to overview skin biology and cell turnover. This is a little bit of the sciencey part of it, but if you can take home some points, it will help you understand a little bit about the later portion. Um, then we're going to go over why we need to maintain our healthy skin. So why is a cutaneous lymphoma patient gentle skin care is so important? And then lastly, we're going to go over some of our skin care guidelines put together by the excellent physicians at Jefferson. So let's go over the function of our skin, right? So it's actually the largest organ in our body. It is an organ, and it's responsible for protecting us from all of those outside influences, right? So it's going to protect us from all the bacteria, ex um, extreme temperatures, cuts and bruises, UV light, pretty much everything. So it's our first barrier of defense in our body. It's also responsible for temperature regulation and, of course, sensation. And this picture at the bottom is just going over all the different functions of our skin. So we'll go over the layers of the skin. So we have three layers of our skin. The top layer is epidermis. It's the waterproofing uh, mechanism of our skin. The second layer is the thick dermis, which is responsible for the support. It houses our sweat glands and our hair follicles and our blood vessels, which help in temperature regulation. And lastly, we have the hypodermis, or the subcutaneous fat layer, which is going to feed those top two layers of skin all the nutrients it needs in order to work well. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at our epidermis, because we know that that's the layer that gets uh, um, the most damaged with our uh, cutaneous lymphoma. So the epidermis is a really interesting uh, layer of our skin because it's so dynamic. It's made up of these little cells called keratinocytes. So it's made up of the protein called keratin. So it's in our hair and our nails, and it's responsible for um, keeping the durability of our skin. So these keratinocytes start at the bottom of the epidermis and they move their way to the top over time. And they're going to generally flatten out and lose their nucleus and become that dead layer of skin on the top that you see. So this process of the keratinocytes moving all the way up and then flaking off when they're dead is called desquamation. Um, we need this mechanism because that outside layer of our skin is constantly interacting with that, those outside influences, right? So it's getting damaged regularly. And we need some type of mechanism to constantly renew that top layer. So um, our epidermis is actually replaced every 28 days, believe it or not. And most of the dust floating around is pretty much dead skin, as gross as that is to think about. Um, so looking at that top layer of dead skin that's going to flake off, it's called the stratum corneum. Here's that top layer of the flattened keratinocytes um, at the top that's actually dead right now. Um, this layer is composed of uh, cells called corneocytes, which are the flattened versions of the keratinocytes, and lipids. And they're put together in a brick and mortar structure. So if you look at the bottom here, um, the bricks are the corneocytes, and the yellow stuff up here is the lipids. And you can basically think of the lipids as oil on our skin, right? So the intracellular lipids form the water-resistant barrier. So we all know that oil doesn't mix well with water, right? So we have that top barrier of our skin that's responsible for keeping the water in our cells and um, preventing them from coming, the water from coming out. And it's composed of ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol. So we want to make sure to look for those things when we uh, get our moisturizer. Um, so secondly, the cells are called corneocytes. Um, these are composed of, it's just keratin, it's just straight keratin and a molecule called um, natural moisturizing factor. I'm sure a lot of you have, might have heard about it before, but natural moisturizing factor is an essential molecule in that top layer of our skin. It's found only in the stratum corneum, and it's responsible for allowing us to take up and release water when we need it most. And an important note is that uh, the production of natural moisturizing factor actually decreases as we get older, which um, predisposes us to uh, having drier skin. So secondly, uh, let's talk a little bit about why maintaining healthy skin is so important, especially as a cutaneous lymphoma patient. So first of all, I mean, we all know how um, annoying dry skin can be and how much it makes us want to itch. And we're already predisposed to itching as a symptom of cutaneous lymphoma, so we want to stop that. So stopping the itch is the main goal here, right? 
We want to maintain our quality of life. There's a lot of patients that come in that say that they can't sleep because of how much they're itching or that um, it affects their daily activities. So having gentle skincare regimen can at least help um, that a little bit. And we also want to prevent infection. This is extremely important, so we'll go over this in detail. So. I talked, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but your skin is really a barrier to all those outside influences, right? So you have T cells and B cells, the lymphocytes that hang out in your skin, and they're going to prevent any of the pathogens from getting into um, your blood and further into your body. Your B cells are going to make the antibodies, and your T cells are going to help activate those B cells and directly kill the pathogens. When you have cutaneous lymphoma, this process is a little bit suppressed, right? Because the T cells and the B cells that normally hang out in the top layer of your skin become malignant and non-functional. And normal T, say, T cells and B cells that aren't affected become outnumbered, and they can't necessarily do their job as well anymore. So this is just a picture of healthy skin. So you have an intact um, stratum corneum with the carneocytes and lipid bilayer, and then the microorganisms and allergens can't get in. And even if they do get in, we have these great T cells at the bottom that can fight them and make them go away. When we have dry skin, and um, we all know that this is a symptom of cutaneous lymphoma, um, that top layer of your skin gets cracked and um, gets uh, really red and all the allergens and microorganisms can come in and then we have these lazy T cells down here that can't really do their job anymore, right? So that's going to predispose us to um, infection. This is a really good picture uh, kind of depicting uh, uh, these red cells right here depict um, the malignant T cells. So in patch stage, we still have a lot of green and blue intact T cells and B cells, but as we progress in our disease, they're pretty much taken over by the malignant cells. So you can see that if something gets through here, there's not much to fight it, right? We also want to prevent disease progression. So um, there's been a lot of studies that have come out that I can talk to you a little bit after about if you'd like. Um, that. The more we itch and the more infections we have, the more likely we're going to have a progression of disease. So the, again, preventing that itch and preventing an infection is essential to our treatment. So let's just look at this little cycle here. So we're predisposed to having really itchy skin as a cutaneous lymphoma patient, right? So we want to scratch, but when we scratch, we open that top layer of our skin, which predisposes us to having an infection because those T cells aren't working as well anymore. Infection and itch is going to lead to a progression of our disease, which, which will lead to more dry and unhealthy skin, which again is going to lead to more itching. So let's try to break this cycle right here with our gentle skincare. Uh, so also having dry skin can make recognizing our lesions a lot more difficult for the physicians and for yourself. It's important um, that your physicians are able to know exactly where the lesions are on your skin in order to efficiently track it. My job at the Jefferson Cutaneous Lymphoma Center is to track exactly where each lesion is on your skin, and this helps me do a lot of different research and, and can help us track your disease. So just as an example, I, might, I know it might be a little hard to see, but on the left, um, our we have a patient that came in a couple weeks ago, and he had extremely, extremely dry skin. Um, you, if you look really hard, there's dark patches, which are his MF lesions, um, which were really hard to see because of all the dry, flaky skin. We had him put some Vaseline on, and then it made it a lot easier for myself and Dr. Sahu to point out exactly where his MF lesions are. So as you can see here, it's pretty easy to spot out where those spots are. Um, so last, lastly, let's talk about some skin care guidelines for patients with cutaneous lymphoma. So first of all, we need to change our shower habits, and we'll get into more detail with that. Secondly, we all know how important moisturizing is. We talked, we touched a little bit about it earlier. And thirdly, incorporating our gentle skin care into our treatment regimens. Just because you have uh, topical treatments doesn't mean that you can stop doing your moisturizing and, and all the other different parts of gentle skin care. So let's talk about changing our shower habits. I know that this is something really, really hard to break with. Um, I used to be a really enjoy my long, hot showers, and then when I started working with Dr. Sahu and Dr. Pro, <laughs> they broke me of that habit. So I've been going through the same thing as you guys, and um, we need to limit our showers to five minutes, and we need to avoid hot water. So actually having a lot of moisture, excessive moisture, is going to dry out our skin. If we think about it this way, it's a hot water and a lot of water is going to take off that top lipid oily layer of our skin, which protects us from, you know, having our skin be dried out. 
Secondly, um, we can lather our skin with oil before our shower to prevent this. I know this sounds a little weird, um, but you can use baby oil, olive oil, any type of oil, and just put it on your skin before you get in the shower, and it's going to prevent the water um, from you know, taking off that top layer. So here we are. So at the bottom, Eucerin makes a really good um, like shower oil, but you can also use just olive oil or coconut oil, whatever works for you. Um, some of them smell nice. <laughs> Um, thirdly, uh, no scrubbing skin. So as I said before, our skin is built the way it is for a reason. So we have that top oily layer for a reason. It's protecting us from having dried out skin. Um, and when we scrub our skin, we're disturbing the integrity of that top layer, right? It's essentially like using a Brillo pad on your skin. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep our, that top layer intact. So it's going to, as I said, deprive our skin of natural oils and it leaves those cells in the layers below exposed. And as we said before, we're always predisposed to having an infection when we do things like this. Four, applying soap to only your underarms, private areas, and feet. This sounds weird as well, <laughs> but soap, as we, this is a little bit of a confusing diagram, but it, I, so soap has these surfactants on it, which are going to interact with the top layer of your skin and the lipids and actually um, denature them. So it's going to strip them off completely. So I, the way I like to think about this is when you know we cook with, a, with oil in our pan. The only way we can get the oil off that pan is by scrubbing it with soap and hot water. So if we do the same thing to our skin, it's going to take the oil right off, right? Another thing about soap is that it actually affects the pH of your skin. Um, conventional soap has a pH of around 9 to 11, while the pH of our skin is about a 5.5. So different parts of our body work best at a certain pH. So um, our stomach is going to have a really low pH to, de um, to degrade your food, right? But our skin works best at a 5.5. That's when our cells are most efficient and can do their best work. When we use soap, we're disturbing that whole equilibrium and changing their environment. Um, some cleanser recommendations. Um, so if you're going to use soap, uh, try using a moisturizing, fragrance-free soap that will usually say for sensitive skin on it. But our best use is going to be hypoallergenic and non-soap cleansers like CeraVe and Cetaphil. Any of these are really great to use. Um, so hopefully this will be up on the site later and if you can come back to it and uh, try different ones that uh, work for you. Um, so moisturizing, I think we talked about this a little earlier, but it's definitely going to be probably the most important part of our gentle uh, skincare regimen. I can't emphasize it enough, so I wrote it three times really largely. <laughs> um, so what is moisturizer? So it's going to replenish that skin barrier. Whether we like it or not, no matter what we do, that top skin layer is going to get kind of exposed to the environment and it's going to wear off. This is a good description of really dry skin, so the water can kind of escape when it doesn't have that top layer anymore. But when we use moisturizer, it's going to put a top layer um, on the top of our skin and replenish those oils and fatty acids that are stripped off from our daily activities. So as you can see, it has the ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol that we like to see in moisturizer. And it's going to prevent water loss in our skin. So we want to try to do this at least two times a day, at least two times a day. And we like to put it on shortly after we get out of the shower because when your skin is damp and you have a little water in your skin, it's actually going to um, draw more water into your cells. And putting on before bed can soothe your itch. So I like to tell all of our patients, maybe put it on right after your shower in the morning if that's when you shower, and then put it on before you go to bed at night. Some moisturizer recommendations. So ointments are going to work better than creams, are going to work better than lotions. Ointments, um, I like to tell patients to put it on the areas that are most itchy. So if you have one plaque or patch that's extremely itchy and it drives you crazy, just put a little bit of Vaseline on it and it should work great. We don't want to cover our whole body in Vaseline, <laughs> so just uh, pick and choose the spots. So then uh, the next best thing is the cream, and all of these work great, the Cetaphil, uh, Eucer, and Aveeno, and our last resort is lotions. Uh, lotions have mostly water in them, so they're going to evaporate off our skin really fast, so they don't do as good work. So gentle skin care and our treatment regimen. So incorporating all these things into our treatment. So topical steroids. We want to apply that uh, a thin layer of our topical steroids on our body. And then when your skin is damp, because again, it's going to draw it in better. And then after our, the topical steroid is sufficiently absorbed, we can put the moisturizer on top. So if you, you can start from the bottom of your body. You can start at the feet with your topical steroid and then get all the way up to where you need to go. And then by the time you get uh, to the top of your body, you're ready for the moisturizer on your feet. Um, 
And then too much of either one will obviously prevent absorption. So we don't want to have globs of stuff on, on your body. It's going to, a little bit goes a long way. Same thing with uh, topical chemotherapy, except for um, with topical chemotherapy, uh, the nitrogen muster, we want our skin to be dry when we do this because um, water is actually might, actually might deactivate um, one of the main ingredients in it. So a good thing to do is to develop a schedule. So if you, are, if you have topical chemotherapy, try to put it on in the morning and then maybe moisturize at night. There's no need to put on your nitrogen mustard and then moisturize over it. That's not necessary. But we do want you to uh, moisturize separately from that. Um, so it's some additional um, recommendations is that we want to try to only purchase items that are hypoallergenic and fragrance free. Again, anything with a strong fragrance is going to irritate your skin and cause it to um, and cause us to scratch, which we don't want to do. Um, using hypoallergenic laundry detergent that's unscented and free of bleach. Cotton sheets and, co and clothes are um, a material that's not going to irritate your skin at all. Um, using a humidifier in your bedroom, if you're especially dry this, um, in the wintertime, this is going to really be helpful because it's going to retain that moisture. Um, using sunscreen, this is vitally important. We all know how, how uh, important sunscreen is in normal use, but um, we want to prevent drying out anyway. So we want to use a physical barrier, not a chemical. So a physical barrier sunscreen is going to deflect the light, while a chemical um, barrier sunscreen is going to actually absorb it and then convert it to heat, which is still going to dry out your skin. So look at the physical barriers, look, uh, look at the back of the sunscreen bottle and make sure it's a physical barrier. Lastly, um, using cold compresses when we're itchy, sorry. Um, this is going to soothe, the, we, I think that we all kind of have experienced when we're really hot that causes us to be a little more itchy. If we put a cold compress on a really itchy area, then it should uh, help out that itch. Um, so conclusion, keeping our skin healthy is essential to your treatment. And this is something that you guys can control yourselves, which is really nice because you can help your treatment work a lot better. Um, so four points to take home today. We want to protect ourselves, not only from uh, UV damage, but just environmental influences in general. Uh, we want to make sure that we're hydrating and you know, moisturi moisturizing our skin. We, when we cleanse, we only want to use hypoallergenic and mild soaps, and only in those areas that I talked about, the underarms, private areas, and feet. And lastly, we want to um, replenish the lipids in our body, so using those moisturizers and oils. Thank you. <laughs>